So what makes an illustration, a drawing, dynamic? What does that even mean? Overall, I think it's one of those terms that get tossed around very vaguely and freely and kind of use it for everything that looks cool. But in this video, we're gonna see if we can ground that a bit, give it a little bit more definition, at least try to figure out what it means to me, and I'd love to hear from you guys as well. If you guys consume most kinds of media, whether it be film, animation, you know, Western or the Eastern stuff, anime and all that, comics, there's always that frame, whether it be a frame of animation or a frame in a panel, comic books, the list goes on, where there is this dynamic shot, the choice of the camera angle, the pose of the character, how it's colored, how it's just delivered to the audience overall. There's something about it that just makes people conjure up the word dynamic. And I think if you are a creator yourself, you should know when to not necessarily overdo it, but when to apply it best within your works, whether it be for a frame, within animation, or a comic book, webtoon, whatever you're doing. As with everything, there's a fine line, so you don't want to overdo it, but there are places where it's definitely needed. And you don't want a comic where everything just feels very straightforward and normal and not dynamic at all. You know, sometimes having a dynamic frame helps engulf your reader into your work. Especially when you're a new creator, just starting out, knowing the dynamic stuff is difficult to do. And sometimes you might not even have the mindset to even think of those things at first. So you, you should get better with time. But I see a lot with most creators, especially when you're making comics, everything is just a headshot, headshot, headshot. So it's not just dynamic in the sense of one frame, but also dynamic in the sense of how you lay out your panels, how you take the reader through this story. Your story might be good, but if your art's not good, then you know it's gonna be hard to get into. Sometimes you can overcome that if the story is really, 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 really good or really something. Same way if the art was great and you brought people to the table, if the story is not that great, you're not gonna keep them at the table. Being able to come up with dynamic illustrations in general is always a strong asset to have. And as I am sure it'll be impossible to cover all of that in one video, we'll see what we can do in this video as we illustrate something that is dynamic and something that isn't. I don't think dynamic is necessarily a yes or no white and black type situation. I think it's more of like a scale or a degree or percentages. And some things are just more dynamic than others. And so we're gonna have two drawings, one more dynamic than the other, and we will kind of discuss as to why we think that is. But first, I've partnered up with Skillshare to bring this video to you, trying to make 2021 a big year where you explore and deepen your already existing passions. Like art, animation, sequential art, and all that kind of stuff. You can get lost in that creativity with Skillshare's online classes. Good chance that what you find on there would inspire you or surprise you, or both. Skillshare's online community offers a lot of meaning to your membership. With so much to explore, projects to create, support you can get and give back from other creatives as you both learn, Skillshare offers real growth, offering classes for real life and furthering your creative journey without putting your life on hold. Short classes to fit your busy schedule ranging from animation to art to comics to cooking to you name it. Not just saying that for the vid, there's classes I've taken in the past that I learned from and classes that I find interesting even now, like this character illustration, drawing faces, figures, and clothing by Gabriel Piccolo. It's a comic artist, illustrator, and he shares his tips on how to improve your drawings, your figure drawings, clothing drawings, and all that good stuff. And the Warrior Guys, compared to in-person classes and workshops, Skillshare is very affordable. And the first 1,000 people to use my link in the description get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. You're welcome. So let's see, we had a character coming from the heavens, crashing through the window, whatever, the ceiling, and coming down, all guns blazing. Depending on the, depending on the camera angle you choose to depict that from, you can have something that's plain and normal and basic. You don't want to be basic, do you? You don't want to be basic. But if we pick the camera angle like so, so it's coming down. Guns blazing. Or whatever she's holding, some kind of weapon. You can still have like a dynamic pose even though the camera angle is not as dynamic. So there are lots of things we're thinking about. Keep in mind we're, 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 we're keep in mind we're thinking of a lot of things, right? And we're trying to add the put this all together and that's kind of what makes it dynamic. And so it's the pose of the character that we're taking into consideration, the camera angle where we're showing it from, all the things that are happening simultaneously. So obviously it would be nice to have a decent understanding of say anatomy to have like a dynamic pose for the character. And so maybe we had, rather than having both legs just coming down normally, maybe it's 
kind of bent a little bit somewhat and she's not just looking this way she's coming down this way so let's have her look down we won't really see her face from this angle so you want to think about the best place to show this character coming down from the heavens breaking through the glass all the bad guys looking around glass all over the place all these things thinking about everything simultaneously is part of what makes the drawing dynamic so right now we figured out the pose and maybe the idea we have the pose itself is dynamic but because of the camera angle we're drawing from we don't really get to enjoy it as much it just looks plain it looks like a, a 2d video game where it's just normal so let's take this pose and add some cells and let's draw one that i think it's much more dynamic, but I think a, a good dynamic angle would be to show another keyword for shortening, right? And this kind of comes in with having a dynamic idea for the pose, a dynamic camera angle, and then you're gonna have to deal with foreshortening. And so you do want a decent idea of human anatomy and foreshortening and perspective with a human body or whatever kind of object or subject you're working with. And a camera angle I want here to show that depth I think the camera should be under her, showing her coming down. And the glass particles breaking all around. If you're working with like a comic book or just an illustration in general, you might even have like speed lines or some kind of blur, you know, behind her and all, you know, maybe even parts of her as well. But I think this is what we want to do. And uh, let's have a more dynamic version and see what we can, we can come up with. Sometimes what helps me kind of construct this is to think in layers. So let's just have simple shapes for where all these body parts are going to be without even having too much detail happening at the same time. And even though she's looking down, right, it's not going to be looking exactly down, like 100% down. It's rarely a 90 degree angle or in any, in any way at all. So even though it's looking down, it's not looking down straight at us. It'll be more... A little bit to that side but maybe not even that steep so these are all the things I'm thinking about so it's kind of like she's looking down at us but also the head is not completely tilted downwards especially you know with the human anatomy it's not too possible to do that and then even though we have this for parts of the neck we might not see the neck so this is part of the foreshortening where we have the chest kind of overlap a lot of things and so it's going to be covered up a little bit i think i maybe want her head to look down a little more remember she has these guns or whatever they are i don't know we'll figure it out as we're designing and we know there's no need to start drawing the hand and constructing it because at the end of the day we know it's going to be blocked and the hand the size of the hand will increase because of foreshortening, right? And sometimes maybe focus on the hand after because what's even gonna be closer to the camera is the end of the gun you don't want to be on. So we're not even gonna see a lot of the fingers anyways. Maybe her body should curve a little bit. It's kind of going too straight. So make it even more dynamic if she was bent down a little bit, just a little bit more. So we might see a little more neck this time. Now, depending on the breast, they will still cause a little bit of foreshortening. Now the distance between both guns should be about the same. So this one being this big, you know, makes no sense unless this one's kind of just as big. Now I've decided to have the other leg bend instead of this one. And what that will do is, and again, as I'm drawing downwards, I know that the drawing is supposed to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger because of perspective and foreshortening. Again, keywords there. Because this leg is going up, it's actually gonna block a lot of all this stuff that we've drawn. And that's why we do this during the sketch, 
This way, you know, we won't feel bad when we, where we're when we're erasing parts of the drawing that maybe we like. Now you got to keep in mind that underneath the shoe should be much bigger than the gun over here again if we see the whole character sometimes in a comic frame we might not see the whole thing we might just see just that part or something like that and then you have like speed lines or some kind of blur or whatever and glass particles everywhere these are parts of all the things that help make a panel pop now this gun here is bothering me a little bit and just maybe more pointed towards the camera, I think. Have it go kind of similar heights to that one. That way we still get to see some some of the fingers and stuff like that. Also, maybe we might want to make this a little different and have this hand actually look like it's extending more. And that right there is your pose. Maybe with this leg, Maybe we want to do something different from the other, like really different, and have it actually come up more. Now I think this works, and I look at this drawing, and I look at the other, despite, I think, dynamism, again, being in that percentile and being a subjective thing. I think most people would agree when I say that this drawing over here, more dynamic than the other. Now we're just going to take the sketch and try to make it all fleshed out, finish it up. Decided to draw the character from Ghost in the Shell and use the design by Ilya Kushinov. I think he, he did like a redesign recently that I think is fun, simple, straightforward. But the point here is you can then take this drawing and then add more details to it, flesh it out. The hard part is done, which is figuring out this difficult pose. I'm trying to figure out the right facial expression for her to have that's her right at least from what i remember with regards to the character but again the dynamic aspect of the drawing comes in several forms like you're thinking about a host of things simultaneously so this is why you need to be able to draw the human face and just the human anatomy in general as well as a host of objects in different angles in organic angles that people would one traditionally see them but also interesting ones where people would maybe would have never thought to see them and it just it, it's different it makes it pop so here's a little rundown i believe if the drawing is a little more wide angled where we get to see a lot more perspective with vanishing points closer to each other the perspective and the foreshortening makes the illustration especially if it's like a human body whatever it is it just makes it pop a whole lot more and feel more dynamic if you want to go an extra step further, you might even want to do something fisheye, but that's just, you just being extra at this point. But again, even with the pose itself, that's another aspect that can be dynamic. You can see several parts of her body doing different things. Everything isn't rigid. It's free. It's loose. The clothes hanging in the air. Nice design overall. A decent understanding of anatomy, so different parts in the joints are doing all sorts of different things that feel natural, and that comes with practice and studying, you know, human anatomy in general. The inking is kind of dynamic-ish, where as the character is closer to us, the lines are kind of thicker, so there's line variation in there. Decent line weight it helps it pop. Attention to detail with the lines, the parts of the line that go in and out. Like, it doesn't just feel flat, unless that's your style attention to detail and also the way you color the character all the lights hitting the character you want to make everything feel vivid you have warm lights cool lights but i'm going to go for a more traditional cell shading anime approach here if you're doing comics it's how you lay out the panels themselves and how you bring the reader through that journey i spoke a little bit about how to do some of this stuff but for the most part there are other dedicated videos on the channel that you guys can go check out to maybe Learn how to have some more dynamic, interesting, professional looking coloring or how to draw certain things with more detail. This video is more of a discussion about what a dynamic image is. So I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. You look at an illustration and you think it's dynamic. Why? What's your definition? For me, it's just something that engulfs the viewer more and more. A picture says a thousand words type deal. 
a lot is going on. It feels organic, feels natural, is pleasant and vivid to look at. It's just coming at you. For the two and a half people that made it to the end of this video, I thank you. Don't forget to like, holy ghost, smash that subscribe button, hit the bell so you stay notified each time I upload absolutely anything. Turn on all notifications. Follow me on all social media, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, the list goes on. Everything you could possibly need will be in the description below, as well as links to my volumes where you can read my series, Apple Black, Public Sincere Lies and Saturday AM. Check all of that and more linked in the description, as well as more videos on this channel. So I'm Manga, and I'm Audi 9000.